Hey everyone, welcome to the All Brands Show. I'm Barbara from AllBrands.com. Today we're going to be talking about two attachments that I think turn your machine into a super workhorse. Um, it's the Move It Foot by Brother and the BSR by Bernina. And I can't wait to show that to you. We'll be showing you that in just a moment. I'm so happy to be here with you again this week. I'm showing you some awesome, awesome stuff. Now, don't forget, we do a live giveaway at the end of every broadcast. So that's not the button. There it is. Uh, you can also click shop product to view the products that we're talking about today. But to win the gift card, comment hashtag all brands. And um, you just made me lucky and win something at the end of the broadcast today. Let's say hey to the folks in the audience. I want to show of hands how many of you either have a Move It Foot or a BSR. Let me know in the comments so that I know if you're a newbie or you want to learn a little bit more um, and all of that. So, uh, yeah. So while I'm waiting for you guys to chime in, I'm going to show you first thing that we're going to. Oh, Brenda, not me, boo-hoo. <laughs> well, I hope that you learned something today. Uh, okay, Melissa has BSR. Uh, Lori, you have one of them. That's great. Rhonda, you have an XP3. You have a Move It Foot. Um, you're going to learn about that today. Yay, in stitches, Sandy has one. All right, so Cindy has the Move It Foot, but hasn't used it yet. Well, there's many good reasons to use both of these um, amazing feet um, by Brother and Bernina. So the first one that we're going to talk about today is the Abroad. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'll have to try it out. In her defense, she literally just got that machine like, what, a month ago? I'm so excited for you. Here it is. This is actually uh, my Move It foot. It's a little bit older. The newer versions are uh, have a leaner profile, um, so you'll see mine's like a little thicker on the bottom. The new style, if you click the link in the description of this video, there's like kind of an angle here um, so that it'll allow more material underneath the foot. So this is it. Here is the top. The, <laughs> the other side has the Brother logo on it. The bottom, okay, here's the magic. This is a rubber belt here. And with this, you can either engage, uh, disengage, pulls it up, or engage it, pushes it down. And there's many, many different attachments to it. So let's see if we have any questions yet. Yes, Miss Maureen has one, hers is slimmer, she loves it. So this is the standard um, attachment that comes with it. They all just snap on and snap off. There's one that's not pictured here that you'll see um, in the photo for the video. That one's for couching, which we're not going to be talking about today. But just know that there are five different feet and then the guides. This is a stitch in the ditch right here. That one is, let's see here. I have it, SA204. Uh, this is your open toe, so this is great for applique or when you're trying to like see what you're what's gonna what you're stitching. Um, that one's really great. That one is the SA195. 
Then we have a quarter inch right here. That one is SA205. Um, so we'll be demonstrating all of these attachments today. Um, and I want to for you to be aware of another attachment that you can have. We're not going to show this today, but it is available for your Move It Foot. The Dual Feed Quilting Guide. So it'll show the machines here um, that you can use it with. Um, and it basically just attaches um, these guides on the right or left for following along the lines um, so that you can stitch straighter. Who doesn't love stitching straighter, right? Okay, let's see. Oh, look, Miss Maureen has all four in the couching foot. Well, let us know what you like about them um, in the comments. Minus the new one, Slimmer. Okay, cool. Francis has one like mine. Yes, I was an original Luminaire owner. So uh, I have the older version here. I have this except for the couching foot. Okay, that sounds cool. Well, let's go on over to the machine and I will show you just how it works. Okay. So basically, I'm going to take my sand driver, which this is the older version. The newer versions are black. Um, and I love this little thing because it's it helps you either you can use this to unscrew the needle plate, put it in the third position to unscrew your, um, to loosen or tighten your hoop screw, or number one is for changing your feet out. So just loosen that real quick. Now take off the embroidery foot, set it up here, and then put my move it foot on. So it just basically goes around the, um, and I have another camera angle too that I can show you guys. Here we go. How's that? So we just screw the foot on. And let's see, first we're going to show the open toe. So all you have to do is just snap that on, whichever one you're going to use. And there is a little um, plug. Your machine will tell the foot how fast to spin this um, conveyor belt depending on the speed that your machine is going. So it's basically talking to the foot. It's very smart. All right, and then you're ready to go. So we'll go into our machine, choose a quilting stitch. So it knows that the move it foot's on my machine. It'll say DF there. So it's, it, it's smart, it knows. Um, I'm gonna go to the quilting section and choose a blanket stitch, okay? One great thing about the Luminaire is that it has the ability to project the stitch on your fabric before you stitch it out. So I always click this little projector button just so that I can see it before I stitch it out. Okay, so we're gonna go and um, I have a little quilt piece here. Let's see here, here it is right here. And where I cut out like a little applique, I'm gonna use my, one of my favorite little travel irons. You may have seen this recently. I know Reen was boasting about hers um, and my wool pressing mat. So this has steam a seam on the back. It was cut on the scan and cut. So let's see, I just kind of want this to be in the center somewhere and we'll just press it down so that it's nice and firm on there, just like any applique. Okay, love it, gorgeous. All right, it's on there pretty good. I don't want to stitch through the backing yet, so I'm going to go back over to the machine. And there we go. All right, now we're on the foot again. Okay, so I'm going to basically just lift my foot up and start stitching around this um, 
little bunny. I'm going to make sure that the foot is down so that I can, um, the, the rollers will roll. But what this does is we have three layers of material here. We have batting, the top, and then this. And thank goodness it's fused down. But it will stabilize the fabric as you're stitching. So we're going to start stitching on the sides. And you can go as fast or slow as you like. And you can actually even kind of turn the fabric as you're going. And it just stitches so nicely. Slow and steady wins the race, right? But it's very reliable and easy to use. Imagine stitching this applique on top. Let me turn this off so you can see it a little bit better. Imagine stitching this applique on top of a quilted piece. Um, so like say it's, it's pieced together and then you have an applique on top of the piecing. That's even more layers that you want to make sure are secure. Let me see if I have any questions. Oh, Rhonda, you found your movement, but yay, I'm so happy. And you have the baby, at least so I heard too. I just kind of, I want all the colors, but I only really need one. I like the pink. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Cheryl says that she uses hers all the time. April loves her luminaire. April, it's so good to see you. She loves the foot, but hasn't used the smaller version. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little bit more, and I'm just going to basically stop whenever it goes to the outer side of the blanket stitch, and then you can use your knee lift or your foot up and down. Actually, on this machine, you don't have to put your foot down. You just press the foot control, and it'll start again. It's just a habit of mine. <laughs> to put the foot down every time. I've, I've learned throughout the years, that's just something that I have to do on other machines. So I wanna show you, I am no master, by the way, of like stitching straight lines, <laughs> being an artist by any means. Um, and I will show you how beautiful this is stitching out. And I'm not forcing or tugging the fabric. In fact, I'm just kind of just like pivoting it with my fingers here and going slow enough to where it doesn't get away from me, but fast enough to where I'm still having fun, right? So we're going to pivot here. Now, on something this curvy, I would have probably used a shorter blanket stitch um, and I'll show you why but having this open toe attachment really helps me to see um, the material as it's going in so I can make sure that the needles right on the outside of the material so let's look at this and I'll just show you up close real quick look how nice this turned out okay oh look at my little blanket stitch right <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that. Let's um check the other camera. I'll see if I have some more questions. So, right? I have a little tail here, but that's okay. So, should I finish it or should we move on to the next thing? Thank you, Cindy. I think it's beautiful too. Very cute, right? I, I literally went to Courtney's house this morning and I was like, hey, do you have any cut on this stuff? <laughs> because my skin and cut was put out of the way. Um, but yeah, so let's move on to the next one. Um, we're going to do the next foot, which will be, let me see which one we should do next. Okay, so we obviously have the closed toe here. And I won't demonstrate using this because this is what you use all the time, um, unless you want something special like what we just did. It has these nice guidelines on it that you can use. And having this extra um, metal in the front will help secure the fabric down um, so that you get the best stabilization on the fabric. So you have stabilization from the back, from the um, 
rubber conveyor belt in the move it foot and stabilization on the front through through that so when in doubt use this but if you're doing something special like quarter inch quilting you would want to use this one okay so that's this here all right let's see aren't those guides great yes i agree <laughs> all right so i love how easy it is just to you know take it off and put it on the top of your machine and just snap the next one on so what i use this one for is piecing i also use it for um seams if i'm doing a quarter inch seam allowance so you would want to make sure let me get another piece of fabric you want to make sure that your um your needle is in a center needle position because the guide's not movable but your needle surely is mus uh, musical M movable <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny? Well, actually, these machines do play music when you when you start. So, I mean, when you turn them on. All right, so I'm gonna not press this because the machine automatically puts the foot down when I press my foot control, which is what I'm doing now. All right, and then we're going to stitch our quarter inch. And we can go really fast or really slow, and it's gonna guide that material through like butter. I could program it to automatically trim that, but it makes a consistent, perfect quarter inch seam allowance the whole way through. And then you open it up. Y'all want to do a French seam? Since this material, we can do that on. So I would basically just bring this over to the um, Oh, I moved my camera again. Here we go. To do a French seam. Just go with me. I know. I know. You basically just, they don't want any um, frayed edges, I guess. So what you could do is use like a, some sort of a, a skewer stick. Or sometimes what I like to do actually is kind of press my French seam so that the inside has like say if it's a skirt or something at the bottom the inside has like an eighth of an inch extra on the bottom I know it's kind of silly but sometimes like I'll just eyeball that to do something like that so I mean that's just an option to like have a little extra there now I'm going to go back to my machine, stitch my French seam. I know there's multiple ways of doing things. And I always press that button. I got I to gotta get myself out of that habit, y'all. Right? So here we go. Really nice quarter inch. I, I should have pressed straight, but I didn't. And that's okay. We're just learning today. But look how nice that looks. I'll show you underneath the overhead camera. So, right? Just a really nice, fun stitch to do. So the move foot is for slickery. Yes. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, Rhonda asked a question that was very good. So is the move foot for slippery or thick fabrics? Yes. And let me tell you something. <laughs> I so wanted to make a video of this blanket that I made for Christmas. It was the um, Shannon Cuddle fabric. It's like super, super duper soft. And I was combining it with flannel and then it had batting in between. It was like so heavy. It was the heaviest thing that I've ever made. It was like a comforter basically. And, um, but yes, it, really secured them like a dream. And you can even use this for like chiffons, um, uh, costuming material. Um, I know those can get really tricky sometimes. Um, so yes, very good question. Thank you, Brenda. You're so kind. I probably need to change my needle since I haven't done anything to my machine since I've done uh, all my Christmas gifts on it. So let's go back.
So that's the quarter inch foot. Uh, perfect for quilting. If you don't use this foot and you're a quilter, um, you should definitely add it to your list. Okay, so the next one is the stitch in the ditch foot. Here it is. Oh, it has it in the middle, the guide in the middle. So you can go to center needle position, or if you wanted it to be like some sort of off of the side um, top stitch, you can move it like right or left, depending um, on where you're wanting the stitch to be. Um, and it just follows that crease. So I know I'm going on a lot of tangents, but um, I did do one of like those easy backings on the quilt that I made. So um, let me show you um, how that's done just real quick so that we'll have something to, to sew. All right, so we have our bunny here and we have our quilt back. So top, batting, backing. So what we do basically is, it should be centered. So a, a very useful tool that you can use that I hope I can find, and here it is, because it's my best friend. And my other best friend is my pins. Um, I cut two inches extra on each, no did not cut two inches extra. I cut one inch extra on each side, I believe. I forgot what I cut. Yeah, it was about, it was about an inch. So I'll use this little um, seam gauge, my favorite thing. I, I have such fond memories of my mom using this when she hemmed all my clothes <laughs> because I had to buy such long pants when I was little. Okay, um, so basically what we're gonna do, instead of doing a whole binding, we're basically making the backing bigger. We're turning it in and ironing it down. This is where some starch would be really, really handy. I think I actually have some. Um, to the to Lauren in the background who adds all the products as I show them in the video. Um, this is soap, which is an awesome product. They smell so good. Flatter by soak. Um, you can spray this on your material. And it's like a starch, but it also smells amazing. So like when you gift your quilt or whatever you're working on. <laughs> it's like it also smells good at the same time, which is wonderful. So we're basically going to like fold it over twice like that. And then we'll do that on all sides. So here we go. I'll just put some pins in it or wonder clips. Let me get those out. Sorry, Lauren. <laughs> I'm adding so many things today. We're just having a good time. See if you have any questions. Seam guide is your favorite tool, Miss Maureen. I love that. I love to hear that. Um, you, there's big ones and small ones. These are the wonder clips. Um, so whichever you prefer to use. All right, so let's take it over to the machine. I have my, I'm gonna put on my stitch in the ditch foot. And I'm not, actually going to stitch in the ditch on this one. I'm going to offset it just a little bit. So I want to stitch um, on to this side of the guide. Um, so let me just set this up real quick. I'm going to put the foot down. All right. Uh, set up this other little shot so you can see. Here we go. All right. I will choose left, right, shift, or just move move it over to where you like it. If you have a memory on your machine, go ahead and save it to the memory. And then use that guide to stitch down the fabric. So what I love about this is you can kind of go fast and it works really well. 
So let's go a little closer so you can see. Don't forget to take your pens out, everyone. Don't sew over your pens. So this is what I was doing on Minky with flannel in the back. Can you imagine how slippery? And it was like the full size piece of material that you buy. Um, can you imagine how heavy that was? So I put it on my cabinet to where I had a lot of surface area on the side of the machine. So I was able to easily um, hold the weight of the fabric that way. All right. So we did a beautiful stitch. So let's go back over to the, um, here, and I'll show you here real quick while I'm switching the other camera around, but this is it. And you can't really see because of the color of the stitching, but look how straight it turned out. That's so hard to do. <laughs> Believe me, I've tried on regular sewing machines and I can't sew a straight stitch to save my life, y'all. So basically what you're gonna do is you do both sides, um, left and right. So you would go ahead and do this side, just like that, the other one. And then when you're ready, let me just, I think we should just do this real quick, if that's okay. Because I wanna show you how, how it works. So we're going to do it one more time. Go on the right side. Love the spray soak. Yes, please. There's one um, that's pineapple that smells amazing as well. But I just can't get enough of that smell. <laughs> I'll walk into my sewing room and like literally sniff my fabric like, mm, it smells so good. <laughs> uh, but nobody's in there to judge me. That's my happy place. So I can do that. Uh, all right. So let's do this again. I'll just put a pin on the top here. So we're basically doing the same thing with the stitch in the ditch foot. There we go. Let me know in the comments, what have you sewn for Christmas? Do you have any New Year's resolutions for your hobbies? Is, are people uh, cleaning their sewing room, maybe organizing right now? Um, And we're off to the races. Nothing in the way. There we go. This is so much easier than like cutting binding and like <laughs> getting the um the bias strip together and, and all of that. This is just makes your life so much easier. All right, so we did both sides here. So basically what you do next is you fold in the corner so that it's like a little kind of a triangle in like that. All right, on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and press it down. Fold this corner in, press it down. Oh, you want to know what else I love? And <laughs> let me get this one out of my closet. Uh, Angela Wolf's clapper. Um, you can use or any uh, wooden clapper. They're phenomenal. I get everyone to sign mine. So I have Angela, Rhonda from Schmetz. So basically, just uh, look how it holds everything in place. Isn't that wonderful? So we just put the corners in and then we're going to turn it in just so that the raw edge of the quilt meets the raw edge of the backing. I'm going to go ahead and like spritz it, put my iron on it, hold it there for just a second. 
And guess what else we can do? Like right while it's there, put this on there to hold it down. They don't call it a tailor's clapper for nothing. Those tailors know what they're doing, right? So I basically, I literally do this. <laughs> I'll be like, mm, you're not popping up. I promise you are not going anywhere. All right, so you basically just do that on both sides. And then once it's like securely in place, then you flip it up and you kind of make sure that your mitered corner, not kind of, but just make sure that this mitered corner uh, matches up to the side. So we can actually do the same thing. So we're gonna fold it up. I might just go ahead and spray this one. Now that we're here, just spray it. We're gonna go down here with my little clapper. We got like a little <laughs> assembly line going here, right? Hmm. How many of you use Taylor's clappers, hams, um, starch, that new spray bottle that just came out that's amazing? Um, I love those things. All right, so we're going to wonder clip this in place. It's pretty secure. Um, but that's how you do the backing um, very easily um, and make it into your binding. So we're gonna go to our other camera. Let me see if I have any questions. Barbara Jones has been busy. Oh, let's see here. What has Barbara been up to? 60 pairs of earrings, 30 wristlet creep key fobs, an apron, a rhinestone bling, a pair of high tops. Oh, cool. I resolved to have more fun sewing this year. Can't wait to go to Bossier City. I can't wait to see you there. Oh my gosh, we need to talk about that. Um, I'm gonna be teaching a My Design Center class in Bossier and Lafayette. Um, let me just pop that on the screen. Thank you for reminding me. It's called All Brands Academy. It's gonna be me, Becky Thompson, and Courtney. And it's going to be in Lafayette. I think we have two spots left. Um, at, at the end of February, and then in Bossier City, which is right by Shreveport, um, is March 1st and 2nd of 2024. So definitely sign up for that. We'd love to see you there. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot down here, stitch my line. And this is like a huge hump. This is where um, <laughs> the move it foot comes in handy because you have all of this bunched up material on the corner and it's just like it's pulling it backwards, which is so nice. And you're not having to tug the fabric so you're not bending the needle or anything crazy like that. It's just falling into place. Now, what I usually do is I'll get right up to the corner and then I'll um I'll kind of like stitch to the corner just to go make sure it's like super secure. Now that's a ton of material. Good luck doing that without a movement foot. I promise you, it's impossible because I was attempting it before I um came to my senses. But here we go. Look at that. It's like a little square. It's, it is a cool square. Isn't that awesome? All right, so what's next? Okay, we are done with the move it foot for now. We're gonna move on, move on, haha, to the BSR. So we're gonna take a short little break. I'll be right back. I'm going to actually literally turn my table around while we're on camera. So, cue the music. Let's see here. You know what? There is music in YouTube in um, StreamYard. Let's try it out. It'll be fun. Here we go.
on with that music. Let me check some comments, see how y'all are doing. I'm feeling my arms, Joanne. Oh, funny. Ah. <laughs> oh, Rhonda says Carhartt jackets to be embroidered. So much fun. Okay, so I didn't have the right cord for the Bernina, but we can talk about the BSR. And um, let's show it to you right here. So basically what the BSR is, is it's a stitch regulator for quilting. So for free motion quilting, and here it is. So it basically, it plugs into your machine, just kind of like the Move It Foot did, but you put your feed dogs down and you move the fabric from left to right. So when you open it up, you'll have like this beautiful manual inside. It'll tell you all about it, the parts and pieces and everything. And then when you lift this little piece, you have the stitch regulator here. So it has uh, three attachments um, that there's like these little buttons here that you push and then pull off. So this is your standard free motion quilting attachment. You have an open toe free motion quilting attachment. So this is for when you want to see like what's coming in to your foot. Um, or you just want to easily get your thread in and out of there without having to pull it up and down through. Um, and then you have this clear one. So the clear is for when you're using like, there's a lot of layers of fabric. There's a lot of like, um, texture on top that maybe this one could get caught on the edge of, you would use this one. And all you have to do is just snap it on. And it works just like that. Um, so let me see if I can finagle um, this real quick. Just a moment. If it doesn't work, then we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to cut it, shut it down a little early today. Fingers crossed. Nope. Okay, but I'll show you how it goes on to the machine. So basically, here's our machine here. And one great thing about Berninas is that the BSR is available for many different models, uh, entry level and up. This is a four series machine, 475. It's really cool that you can do free motion quilting with stitch regulation on something like this. Um, I, I'm begging brother to put stitch regulation on their machine. So basically we're going to just um, take the foot off and there's, you don't have to use a screwdriver with these machines and you can just put the foot on just like this and then plug it into the back. Now, when you, um, put the foot on the machine, it's going to recognize that it has BSR and it will give you two modes. So, and it will notify you to lower your feed dogs. So on this machine, the feed dogs are on the left hand side right here. So you just push this lever in, it lowers the feed dogs. And then you can basically choose two options. BSR one, will continue to have the needle go up and down, um, even if you like stay still. BSR2, like if you stop, it will stop stitching. Um, so that's BSR. Um, and you can just move the fabric if you have like a tight spot. This is what I was gonna demonstrate it on, <laughs> this tiny, tiny quilt. So um, say if you wanted to like do some squiggly lines like in this little tiny area, um, you can just put it in there, move it around, and stitch it all around like that. So, yeah, that's BSR. Move it. Does anybody have any questions or want to learn anything else? Again, please sign up for the All Brands Academy at the uh, end of Lafayette. End of Lafayette. End of February is Lafayette. 
beginning of March in Shreveport Bossier. So if you're in the Arklatex area, please come to that. We would love to see you. Aw, uh, yes. <laughs> the Bernina machines are fun colors. Thank you, Rhonda. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Next week, guess what? I can't wait. We have um, Christine Connor from Amelie Scott. She's going to show us better than I ever could the basics of edge to edge quilting, which will be super fun. And uh, she's a, the originator. So best person to learn from. Yes. All right. Who wants to do a giveaway? All right. Let's bring it on the screen. And I'm going to pull a winner. And our winner is in stitches. Oh my gosh. I love it. Um, please email me at events at allbrands.com, your name, number, and address to claim your $25 allbrands.com e-gift card. Congrats. I love it. Thanks, everybody. We do have one question that came in. Ah, oh, Joanne Banco. Hello. So good to see you. What kind of table is that? Okay, so this is a Martelli table. Um, yeah, I've had it for a long time. Really like it. It's a good one. Okay, well, we'll see you next Thursday at 3.30, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of your year. There's only a few days left, and next year's going to be even awesomer. And I have a, I have a little, I have a New Year's resolution, and I'll share it with you guys. It's cheesy. And here we go, because I'm cheesy. Um, I vowed to not base um, my... Uh, resolutions on trivial things like if I follow this diet or if I, you know, finish cleaning this or that, my resolution is to come from a place of love so that when I do things for myself out of love, I'll do better things for myself like cleaning or, you know, um, good things. And my, um, Winning or losing won't be based on whether or not I finish those things um, because I'll already be coming from a place of love. And yeah, because it's just a journey and got to enjoy it. And, you know, sometimes you may not finish this or that or, but it's just about the process and loving, loving yourself, which is so important. And I love you guys. And I hope that you have a wonderful New Year's holiday and we'll see you again in 2024. Bye.